Okay. Thank you very much to the Nigerian Premier League where so many goals scored on match day 24. About 20 goals, of course, were scored. Of course, Abia Warriors and Inva were playing thrilling three all draw. A huge one for both sides. Six goals and they had to share share all. And for Baisa and Kaduna, Baisa United winning that one by three goals to not Sunshine Stars and Dolphins. It was a goalless draw. Worry Wolves and Canopilers. Canopilers losing again mm. the second time in a row. Not a good one for defending champions. And Lobby Stars and Nassau United. Lobby Stars, of course, winning that one by a lone goal. And the game between Aqua United and Economy Warriors, it ended in favor of the home team, Aqua United. Hatland and Gobi Hatland winning that one by two goals to nothing. Rangers and Giwa FC. Rangers winning by a lone goal. FC Taraba and Nimbo City. Nimbo City, well, they're coming to the Premiership through the back door. Was really not, is it definitely not a good one for them this season? One <laughs> or draw. Well, that is a good result getting the point away from home. And Crown FC and Sharks. Crown beating Sharks by two goes to nothing. Kind of pillars. What is happening to them? Uh, well, um, it's the Nigeria Professional Football League. You say when you go away and you don't get the points, people think um, it's normal. But no, it's not. They are yeah. back to back champions. They have the quality, you know, to play good football. But, you know, um, losing two successive away games um, doesn't uh, doesn't speak well for them. But it's well with the loss too. So that's another team that needs all the points and they need because they are seventh at the table. They only want to consolidate. But let's talk about um, and even with with what kind of players is going through, you can see they've done so after 24 games. They're still on top of the table with 40 points. So um, we're still showing okay, from it's just champions it's mentality. Yes. We really need to win. And check the goal difference. Not really much. Nine nine. We can just see the top four. What it looks like for kind of pillars, of course, still dominating. You know, 40 points. You mentioned that. Now, if you check the goal difference, it's not really much. So they don't. They can't afford to drop more points. It was nine, nine and nine. That's really not a good one on the goal difference. And of course, you have a Nassau United third on the log, also on 38 points. Check the goal difference plus seven. Aimba, fourth position, 37. So definitely kind of pillars. The likelihood that they will retain this title, it's definitely going to be difficult for them. But that's what we want. We want the league to be competitive. <laughs> competitive. And when you look at the table, you, you start saying to yourself that this is actually what we need. And for me, um, the major talking point would be if Nassau United can knock off kind of pillars and <laughs> abia warriors nah, we hit and, uh, and dolphins actually then, the then <laughs> that means they're giving me reasons you know to they're giving more people uh, reasons to follow on the league but let's talk about that game between aimba and abia warriors that's what the local uh, that's what the local league needs you know when you play competitive yeah, I think as that okay this is the bottom four you have name basically we talked about them 23 games they play 23 points um, goal defense just minus 21. That's really a bad one for them. I don't think they can survive the league basis. Crown FC, Cardinal United, Gombe United, because these are the top four. Now, talking about Eimba mm. and Abba Warriors, that's a huge game. It was a fantastic derby. It's the sort of derby you, you actually want to see on TV to actually say that Nigerian football is getting better. Um, and that's why we want, want it to be competitive. When Rashid Olabi scored that goal for him, they thought they were going home. Of course. Three points. Three points. Until that former color, not seller, <laughs> Chikata Rachi, so, you know, give it a fairy tale ending. Good one. 3-3, three, three, six goal trailer. Um, within your of referees being beaten, within your of um, people being stoned and all of that. That's the sort of football we want to see. In you know, the bygones in the days. And, and then <laughs> about, about leading the way, about leading the way is a good one. So I, I also want to say that also I was rather good result. Um, hat trick for Peter Ebimobo uh, scoring in that game for Bayside United. Bayside United. Bayside United 3-0. Good one for you know um, the league with with results as this. I have reasons to leave my house, go to the stadium, <laughs> and, and of just course, get sure there is good security, and then you enjoy good football. Good football, yes, you will definitely do. Now, talking about our breaking news this morning, we started with the fact that CAF has confirmed that Nigeria are through to the 2015 African Youth Championship, but they did not play Lesotho because they decided not to come well to play of Ebola. They did not honor the game, and of course, for them, where they are out, of course, for Nigeria, becoming the first team to qualify. Senegal, they're hosting, so already they are there. So for Nigeria, I think they will have more time mm. to prepare. But the news is that they've become this morning, yeah. because they will definitely be grouped again yeah. much later in the year or first half of next year. But I think CAF may really need to do something about this, because I'm afraid of what will happen in 2015. I'm talking about the real missions cup if these countries if morocco you know didn't have it if they were allowed some west african countries to actually travel down yeah. because of this issue 
Well, big, big issue, and I'm, I'm really sad it's, it's creeping and you know, giving bad effects to, to sports. You know, not just in football, yeah, uh, we've seen it in the Youth Olympics, we've seen it um, in other aspects as well. But um, let's throw that uh, qualification game to Lesotho and um, yes. Ni Nigeria. Um, big shame on Lesotho because uh, they just saved themselves the embarrassment of being beaten. Seven goes to nothing. They're not going to come to Nigeria to do anything. Uh, well, it's good to use Ebola <laughs> as, um, as, um, as, a lame as defense. <laughs> but, but no official letter to CAF, no official letter to the Nigeria Football F uh, Federation is a show of Just um, posted a statement on their website, look, we're know, not coming. <laughs> and killing the spirit of you know, sportsmanship that football is trying to create. So um, I'm not really worried whether they come or not. Nigeria was still going to yeah, you know, advance. So the top four teams are um, the 2015 AYC match to qualify for the 2015 FIFA on the 20 World Cup. And that's, that's our focus, actually. Of course, the World Cup, definitely not <laughs> Africa, because already, OK, they're not champions yet. Right, talking tennis now, Serena Williams, World Cup, both of them, of course, they won Cincinnati Master. For Serena, is the first for her. She said that was the only trip she actually needed to add to, you know, her cabinet is already filled. And for Roger Federer, 80th career title is a huge one for him, a landmark for him. The only man to have done that. But let's just enjoy that highlight. We'll come back, we we'll get to listen to them talking, how they feel winning the Cincinnati Masters. When the last time we actually won the title was also at Cincinnati now, it was 2012. So he's a huge one going into the US Open. This is a man who is 33. And of course, you also have David Ferrer in his 30s also. It's like he's really not tired, especially after beating Milos Raonic in the semifinals. That's it. Um, with what um, Federer and Ferrer did, they're just trying to tell the young guys that, hey, the old <laughs> folks can still play tennis. But, but nobody will be worried. So come on, meet us at the Grand Slam event. You know, the Jacobin <laughs> in Navarro are waiting. Definitely you know. waiting. But it's a good one for um, Federer. Uh, we've always said that... Um, Sports need a particular name to keep, you know, the top brand of, you know, So for Fabra to, to win, it's huge, 33, and um, can actually produce this sort of play. Against Ferrara, it's not easy. Remember, in the second set, I was close to even giving but a love. The good thing is, 16 times they've met before now. And I mean, 16, Ferrara 16 is times to, they've met, of course, and um, Ferrara is yet to, to beat win, him. Yeah. So, which is really a huge jump. Now, Serena Williams, she's going stronger. Well, let's just get to listen to both of them, how they feel after winning as a
great win. Not an easy week. Played a couple former number ones and. So, great week for me. Um, great year so far. Um, couldn't be more excited. I love this tournament here in Cincinnati. I've played so well here over the years, and now I need some rest, and I'll get I'll get ready for New York soon. Yeah, it was um, not an easy week. Played a couple former number ones and a couple Grand Slam champions. So, um, yeah, it was very well to, to get through this, this difficult week. This trophy is really very funny. Like, well, it's like, a trophy. <laughs> and um, I have 62 um, WTA titles for Serena Williams and um, her fifth in 2014. You look at Serena Williams, I said the only thing that can stop her is injury. Yes. She's just phenomenal when playing tennis. And um, she's got a wonderful career. She needs to build a mansion, start keeping all her trophies. Because with the way she's going, and I'm winning I'm this now. Next week, Monday, the US Open comes. It will motivate her to go all the way, you know, to, to do what she knows how to do best. At 32, it will be Very difficult sure. to point something. It's going to be this lady. Then, I mean, yeah. she, she plays good tennis. Well, Ivanovic actually beat her at the Australian Open. So I don't know what happened to Ivanovic this time. Uh, Serena winning in straight sets. Okay, from tennis now, well, let's just talk premiership, of course. It has started. Liverpool recording a huge victory at home. But it was really, they almost, you know, it was almost a draw. You know, Danny Sturridge had to produce some moment of magic to get that win for them. Manchester City also, where well, they had to dig deep, had to throw all their arsenals at Newcastle for them to win by two goals to nothing. The really good thing is that Liverpool won at home just as Arsenal did on Saturday, also winning at home. That was after the opening day of the game. Only uh, Arsenal were able to win at home. But let's just look at what happened to Manchester City, of course, and Newcastle. What do you yeah. think about the games? Good game. And um, again, it shows uh, why you shouldn't take your eyes off um, the champions. Yes. They are back. And Manuel Pellegrini says um, they will not look back or be complacent that they want to play good football because he knows he has a better team. Remember in 2012-2013 season, after they won, they came back and they lost with distant points to Manchester United and they said that is not going to happen. And if you look at this Manchester City team, they, they just, they were, with the way they played, with the way they played yesterday, you can see that they're, they're still trying to understand themselves. Now everybody is talking about yeah, yeah. What about that pass yeah. uh, to Jekyll and then the, the back heel? Fantastic, you know that's a team. Okay, now talking about this man, who's in both of us at back at that beach. Well, he will be in Rio de Janeiro, and of course, he's already there trying to test what the waters look like. For him, he was able to win the hundred meters uh, game, so it was a huge one for him. But he said it wasn't really. He wasn't really at his best. He's the fastest man in the world. Uh, Manu and Manu, that's the name of the competition because this is actually had before it was held ahead of the Olympic Games. Post for the first city goal. So, but what well, lightning, but rather it finished in a time of 10.06 seconds. And he said he was really, really very slow. <laughs> yeah, that, that's slow for both, but um, I don't know. Sometimes I look at you say, but I start wondering who can actually push him off even in 2020. Twi no, 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 age, age will do that. <laughs> the age 20, 20, it will be difficult because uh, age will do that. His charisma yeah. will keep him going, you know. Yeah, he has what it takes to actually motivate it's himself and then carry the crowd behind. And that is all you need to motivate yourself to victory. So you say good for me. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay, that's for us. But of course, you can hear him talking. But we'll end the show here. Thank you so much for being part of it. Of course, if we still have time, you get to enjoy what happened in motorsports, MotoGP, where, uh, well, Mark Marquez could not just win that 11th consecutive title he was looking for since the beginning of the season. Danny Pedro's, of course, made sure of that. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Business Morning is up next. Bye for now.